All right, in our, in our next lab, we're going to be looking at fluvial processes or how streams and rivers work and how does water kind of interact with the land that surrounds it. So first, we want to talk about some basic uh, aspects of a channel of a river and, and how it flows. In our last lab, we kind of looked at flow rates and we talked about how different orientations, diameters, and amount of head um, would affect different flow rates. So you guys have a pretty good idea of what a flow rate is. Uh, it could be measured in gallons per second, meters per second, cubic feet per second. Um, but either way, the equation that we used was QV uh, flow rate is equal to V over T, volume over time. Um, and what would be done by a scientist um, to study the flow rate of a river or a creek um, into another body of water is they would find a checkpoint where they could measure how much water was passing that specific point, how much volume of water was passing that specific point in a certain amount of time. So that might look like this. Um, <clears throat> there would be a, a river here and in the bottom of that river or at different elevations or uh, different depths of that river they would have a, a station where they would be able to check flow rates. Um, there might be a, <clears throat> a tool similar to this one um, that would have some sort of turbine that would spin um, and based on how fast that was spinning they would be able to gauge uh, the flow rate of that water. And they would collect this data over time uh, and then they would be able to come up with uh, you know the amount of discharge that river gives off um, and how fast that water is moving, what its depth is, what time of year it is, all of those types of things. So if we looked at um, the USGS, the United States Geological Survey, we'd be able to find water flow data for all of the major ri rivers in the area. Um, and there's a reason that they do this and it's so that they can um, study you know how that river interacts with its surrounding areas but also to see how impacts of things like land use um, would affect the flow, the flow rate of a river. As you guys know, um, as we change the surrounding area, we are also going to change that the way that the river flows. Um, if humans change the diameter of the river, if they dam the river, if they put more meanders or curves in the river, it's going to change the flow um, patterns and flow rates of that river. Uh, it could increase the amount of erosion, erosion that river sees. Um, it could increase the amount of flooding events that river has. Um, so our interactions um, can greatly affect, affect a river. Uh, and one of those things is urbanization and uh, the changing of, of the amount of vegetation that is there. So uh, that could be through agriculture, removing um, trees to put in crops that have small root systems versus the large root systems that a tree would have. Uh, that could be completely removing all vegetation and putting hard and impermeable surfaces in. We can also talk about how we might be changing uh, the, um, the landscape, how we might be changing elevations, how we might be changing slopes, and how that would affect um, the flow of, of a river. Because in the end, we've talked about... Um, drainage basins and watersheds and that water has to go somewhere um, and it has a natural route that it would normally take um, but then it's also going to have a route that human interactions might force it to take that normally would not be there. Um, and because of all these interactions many times what we see um, is a change in lag time. So lag time is saying this we have a rain event uh, water is going to fall on a surface Normally it takes a certain amount of time for uh, water to work its way through the, through the root systems, through the soil, into um, the, the water bed um, that is below the ground, and eventually it'll flow into a river, uh, lake, or pond in, a, in that area. But it takes some time for river to be, or for uh, that water to be able to work there. So uh, we have our rainfall event. Time is going on. It's taking time for that water to work down um, into our below ground water system. And we have this all this lag time from here to here until we get to our maximum water flow in a river, and then eventually it will go back down. 
In an urban area, uh, water doesn't have the ability to go through impermeable surfaces like roads, uh, parking lots, um, those types of things. And there's not as many root systems um, and vegetation to absorb that water. So our leg time is, is much, much shorter and our peak flow rate is much, much higher. So in urban areas, we often see many more flooding events uh, because water has nowhere else to go. Again, we can see that here we have our rainfall event. In an urban area, that peak water flow in a river is rather um, timely. It, it happens quickly because water has nowhere else to go. Um, and that peak um, flow rate of that river or stream is much, much higher than in an unurbanized area where uh, the lag time is, is much longer and uh, that peak flow event is, is much, much lower. So we interact with um, these water systems in a lot of ways and uh, the actions that we have, the actions that we take um, are going to greatly affect how that river or water system behaves. And that's what you're going to be investigating as we move forward in this lab.